yourself up, little man. Last time. Come on out. All right. You asked for it. What do you want? Your friends. Where's your camp? You'll never find out from me, Swan. You remember what happened to you the last time I caught you? Getting lost. Yeah. You're the one that's gonna get lost, mister. This is your last chance. I said get lost, Swan. All right. That's the way you want it. What's the matter? I could have sworn the sound came from this direction. Dan, the forest has been jumping with SID men all afternoon. They've got you imagining things. No. I'm sure I heard something. Wait. You're right. There was something there. Might be a trap. Dan, take fit you. Work your way around that side. We'll go the other way.
stand doing, you'll be caught. Inspector. Inspector Swan. Isn't he with you, Lieutenant? No. Who is it, Dan? Inspector Swan. The guy who's been giving us such a rough time. He's dead. Wait till Marky is about that. It's Swan. He's dead, sir. Get Doc Jelko on the radio. Calling Dr. Jelko. Come in, please, doctor. This is Dr. Jelko. Go ahead. This is Sergeant Barker, doctor. Please stand by. Lieutenant Grayson calling. He's on, sir. Yeah. Hey, Doc, there's a second murder. It's done the same way as the one this morning. This time it's Swan. Was the poison the same? Let me see. Looks like curare and the same kind of dark. Exactly. Where are you? Around 11D on the sector map. I'll call an ambulance and get right out. All right. Let's look for the little people. Dan, we gotta get out of here. Wait a minute. suspect us. They always blame us whenever anything bad happens. No. Lieutenant. Looks like this was used for the blow gun. Corari, can't mistake it. Uh, looks like it has tiny letters on it. Let's see. There we go, see? The initials M. Sure looks like something the little people might use. Well, let's just keep looking. Keep a sharp lookout, Sergeant. I am, but I don't see anything. The initials M.W. It belongs to Mark Wilson. He made a half a dozen of them to keep his fishing rods together. He said... What are you getting out of this, Hugh? Mark had nothing to do with it. He left on a three-day fishing trip this morning. I didn't mean anything. Well, we can't talk here. Let's go. Not out about it. Or 
stories down this dark. I understand you found the blowgun. Yes. The murderer must have dropped it. And there's no question it was one of the little people. No doubt about it at all. The target area was the ankle in both cases. Just their height. It's out and out murder. They make a strong case against him. Lieutenant Grayson, is that you over there? Well, that's the newscast of Bertha Fry. That's all we need. I'll have the body picked up. Hello, Doc. Hello. Nice to see you again, Lieutenant. I gather you haven't caught the little killer yet? You're positive that the killer is a little person, Miss Fry? Come, come, Lieutenant. You're trying to hide things from me again. I wouldn't dare, Miss Fry. Obviously, you've been eavesdropping on the police radio band. Yes, since the murder this morning. Shame this one had to be Swan. He was much more effective against the little monsters than Inspector Kovac. Obviously, that's why he was killed. Check that, Sergeant. Yes, sir. What can you give me on this? Now, I know it was Curare again, but what else? Nothing else, Miss Fry. I'll be on the air soon. There must be some statement, some new angle. You will get a statement the SID chooses to make along with the rest of the news media, Miss Fry. I have a vast audience, Lieutenant. They'll be very sorry to hear about your lack of cooperation. Lieutenant, would you come here, please? In a minute, Sergeant. It's urgent, sir. Tiny footprint with a star on the heel. Make a plastic cast of it, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Since I'm here, Lieutenant, this is hardly classified information. I feel perfectly free to announce it on my broadcast as legitimate news. What I want to know is... How did Mark Wilson's little metal tube get to the scene of that murder? But you, how do we know? That's what Steve's in there calling Mark about. And one thing for sure, we know it wasn't Mark himself who put it there. No, he's miles away fishing. What do you say? Couldn't raise him. Great. He turned up his radio. It never occurred to him he might have reached him. It's inconsistent. You take it easy. Please you take it easy. In no time, there'll be thousands of SID men swarming down on us. And that Bertha Fry gets started on a spawn murder. I tell you, this woman is I fish. said, take it easy. Hey, she's going to be on the air in a minute. Let's listen to her, okay? You know, Steve, you should probably get out of here and find a new lineup for the time being. Yeah. You know, there's that uh, abandoned storm drain just north of here. Yeah, that's a good idea. said to be my hysterical reactions to the spying of the little people. My critics, some among the SID, I might add, have demanded facts, not fancy. Well, my loyal listeners, here are the facts. The little people are ruthless, cold-blooded murderers. I can now reveal that the man who was killed by one of the little people this morning was a carnival operator who once had held them captive. Tonight... Another man died in the same fashion. Inspector Swan of the SID. Deadly curare was ejected in the ankle of both victims with a small blowgun, an instrument of death that could have been made only by the vicious little people. You're the one that's vicious. And if you need more evidence, a tiny footprint was discovered near the body, a footprint with a star mark in the heel. How long are we going to wait to rid ourselves of these murderous little parasites? Let me hear from you, dear friends. Now. Now, listen, Steve. I shall not when you told me to. You heard her. A footprint with a star mark in the heel was found at the scene of the murder. Who else with a star mark in the heel of his shoe? None of us. Except Mark Wilson. Too much mouth at you. I need it! You might face reality, don't you? 
You all know how Mark hated Inspector Swan. Mr. Fitzhugh. Why don't you make those accusations to my face? You can say what you like. You put us all in jeopardy. You're supposed to be miles away, yet here you are. What, am I guilty to prove innocent? I haven't heard any defense, have defense? you? Defense? He's got a lot of explaining to do. And not a whole lot of time to do it in. Well, we didn't give him much of a chance now, did we? Then get back out here and start talking. Steve. Steve, he was angry and, and, and confused. And, and... Look, we got to know what went on. Just give him a few minutes. He'll be all right. It's too important. Steve, we don't have much time. I'll talk to him alone. Talking? He can. He's gone. citizens are all asking the same question. Is this another case of sabotage by the little people? Please stay tuned for further details and bulletins as they break. There is be additional proof that I'm right about oh, Mark. Oh, could you stop it? You think Mark's had time to get into town? Yeah. Do you think he could have taken some explosives with him? I doubt it. He had one package and then used for emergencies. I'll check it. It's gone. And so is one of the flare guns. Mark must be out of his mind. Did you? None of us know that it was Mark. Well, we got to find out what's happening. Dan, you're coming with me. The rest of you keep hacking. We're going to SID headquarters. If anybody knows what's going on, they will. Get up on the desk. See what we can find. We use a lamp cord.
Third man, Lieutenant. I repeat, we're meeting with the press tomorrow morning. Your office was informed of that. I didn't get to be a success waiting for tomorrow's. I'm a now person, and I demand to know what you found out now. Miss Fry, why don't you mind your own business? This is my business. We have 12 phone operators, and they can't handle the switchboard since my broadcast about Swan's death. I could report to my audience about your antagonistic attitude. Shall we talk? Go ahead. Frankly, I have nothing to tell you. You haven't already put on the air. Oh, come, come, Lieutenant. Let's not play games. Now, what about the explosion downtown a little while ago? Was that an attempt on the part of the little people to create a panic? If anyone is going to create a panic, Miss Fry, it will be you. Don't lecture me, Lieutenant. Just answer my question. The explosion occurred in a private experimental lab. We have no definite evidence yet to incriminate the little people. And what are you doing about it? Sergeant Barker is on the case. I'll have a full report as soon as he gets here. Good. I think I'll wait. Criminal psychology, Lieutenant. Criminal psychology, Miss Fry. You find something wrong with that? No. At last, we have something in common. Lieutenant. First time you've seen one of them? Yes, it is. They're not quite the terrifying monsters you make them out to be, are they? I judge their actions, not their size. Indeed, they are. Hiding and spying on your desktop. Are you accusing me of something, Miss Fry? I had no idea they were there. We haven't done anything. No. You're here to pave the way for an invasion from your planet. And you're going to kill anyone who gets in your way. One of these men is your murderer, Lieutenant. Perhaps both of them. We're not murderers, Miss Fry. I hardly expected a confession. Come in. This is Mr. Zarl. He was hurt in the explosion, Lieutenant. Dr. Jelko showed up at the scene, gave him first aid, wants him to be checked out at the hospital. But I thought you would have seen him first. Yes, yes, of course, Sergeant. And now, Mr. Zorro, please tell us what happened. I received a call at my home. A man asked me if I would come to the lab a little after nine to discuss a highly scientific matter. I agreed. I'd unlocked the lab door and was just about to open it when something caught my eye. I turned to get a closer look, and that's it. That's all I can tell you. Clever trap, typical of the little monsters. Miss Fry, if you continue to interrupt, I shall have you removed. Now, Mr. Zorro, you have no recollection of what you saw? Nothing. This was part of what distracted Mr. Zorro. Some kind of an earth gun, I'm not sure what. Do you have an explanation for this? You caught the little killers. Have you ever had any contact with these little people, Mr. Zorro? Not these, but two others. Some months ago, Professor Gore and I were making a mechanical man. Uh, a little scientist named uh, Mark Wilson caused it to run amok, kill the professor, and then destroy itself. Mark Wilson, M.W.? Those were the initials on the blowgun that killed Inspector Swan. Sergeant, let's get him over on the couch.
He's got to be out of his mind if he's doing all those things. <laughs> I can't believe that he did it. And you? I don't know. But we got to find him. I'd like to go to my own doctor. Oh. <laughs> Same technique. Karari dart and ink. No solution, no promise of a solution. Just word that the SID press conference set for this morning has been canceled. The mood of the people is ugly, dangerous, and understandable. <laughs> somewhere near him. If he doesn't turn it off, we can use that signal to track him with our direction finders. Right. Barry, go get him. Right. Put those down, Fitz. You... Look, uh, we're going to separate into two groups. Dan, you take Fitz, you, and Valerie, and you go to the north end of the city. We'll go to the south end through the woods. Now, set your course onto the transmission. Where we meet, that's where Mark's radio ought to be. I hope Mark's there, too. Here. Well, then, what it adds up to is that the source of curare is readily available, is that right? It's the sap of a fairly common bush. Particularly along stream sides in the forest. Well, then why isn't it used more often? It is, medicinally. In its natural state, it's mildly soporific. It becomes deadly when it's distilled. Which the little people could conceivably do. Right. Hmm. Well, you asked for the facts. You got them. Miss Fry again, sir. Excuse me, I have some things to do. I see you, Doc. Well, Miss Fry, what now? Don't get high-handed with me, Grace, and I'm in no mood for it. I've arranged to talk with the Supreme Council. I'm going to ask for its intercession in this affair. And I'm going to tell them of your refusal to cooperate and your willful insistence on doing things by the book 
instead of using some determined action in the interest of the people. By determined, don't you really mean ruthless? I mean exactly what I've said. You get one thing clear, Miss Fry. Unless otherwise ordered, I do things the legal way. You better heed the voice of the people. By that, I'm sure you mean the voice of Bertha Fry. You're going to see what the voice of Bertha Fry is all about, Lieutenant. It's funny, this thing seems to be zeroing in right here. Look, Steve. It looks like a gold piece or something. Don't touch it. I don't like the looks of that. Step around. How's that feel? I think I just twisted it. I don't think it's broken. Steve. Steve, come in. I got you, Dad. That sounded like another explosion. It was. Another one of Swan's elaborate traps. We were pulled into this cave by an electromagnet. I had to short the electro. When I did, the whole place blew sky high. I can tell you we were very lucky to get out. Is everybody okay? Yeah, we're fine, except 
think Perry has twisted his ankle. I'm gonna leave him here. I'll check you later. Perry, you get back right in that spot and lay low. When we get Mark, we'll come back and pick you up. Right. Come on. Mark just landed. this anymore. I'll soon have all of you here. See that? Okay. Uh, there's nothing. Why don't you try getting Dan? Maybe there's something wrong with the finder. set must have gone off. Steve, do you have that rough map that we made? It's in the pack. Yeah, we got it. Well, look, we've come far enough. All we have to do is project a line from our starting positions to our present positions. And where they intersect is where we meet. Right. Dan, what's your position now? Exactly parallel 2214. You sure of your position? Yeah. You know where Mark is being held? Well, I know it's right in the middle of the city. Right in the middle of SID headquarters. What? Fry, who authorized that? I've had my little talk with the Supreme Council. There's going to be a lot of news coming out of here. Is that so? Yes, it is. You'll be hearing their decision very soon. I already have it, Miss Fry. Is that all you came to see me about? I'd advise you to take their orders. You get that mobile unit out of here at once. You have three hours, Grayson, or else. Or else what, Lieutenant? I'm fired. The SID removed and the whole investigation placed in the hands of the military. That means they'll do whatever is necessary to kill off the little people. Fire, bombs, tanks. That dame really carries a lot of power, doesn't Man, she? Man, does she? Maybe you ought to make a deal with her. What? Not on your life. You put every able-bodied officer in the field for a search. I want those little people. But, Lieutenant... Those are your orders. And you keep in constant contact with units. Do you understand? Yes, sir. What about Mark? Is he alive? We didn't see him. I want the two of you to go back to camp. Get ready to leave. If we're not back in three hours, I want you to take whatever you can and move out. 
Just, just go and go and argue. Go on. Quite bad. Yes. Maybe we should all go. Betty and Valerie haven't got a chance alone. We're not going to leave Mark. You know, if Grayson's captured Mark, why doesn't he just turn him over to Fry? That way we'd get Fry and the military off his back. Yeah, well, if he has Mark, he isn't ready to say so. On the other hand, someone else in there might have him. <laughs> You're going to have to go back over that again much slower. Well, the way I figure it, Mark is being used as a patsy. Someone in the SID wanted Swan dead. So killing the carney operator, then Zorro, was like uh, a red herring to throw the suspicion on us. Who could that be? Doc Joko knew about Curare. Uh -huh. And Swan couldn't have been hard to dislike. Wait a minute. Swan and Grayson were eligible to replace Kobik, but he went on special assignment. Swan got it. So it's probably Grayson. I'm going to check out Grayson's office again. While I'm there, you two fan out, look around. <laughs> You, Steve. I just checked out Joko's office. There's a diathermic machine that could have caused the interference in Mark's radio. I checked out the desk, and that's negative. I couldn't get into Joko's closet, though. Well, I'm in Greaston's closet right now, but I can't get out. I think you could handle Joko's phone by yourself. No problem. Okay. Grayson out of here for about a minute. Then call Fitz. And, uh, we'll meet back there in the vent. Right. see him? Room 27? Um, hello? Hello? Nice going. Got nothing to report. It's the grace to show him to that building. Parker's office? Couldn't chance it. He's in the room and all over it, checking units in the field. One thing, every office I looked into has an electric pencil sharpener. Uh -huh. Now, what 
so radio interference is a clue. Yeah. Let's check out Varka's office again. Invent. I read you, Unit 3. Now, move on to Sector 7 and continue to search. Sergeant, bring the unit disposition chart to my office, will you please? Yes. Somebody phoned about siding one of the little people in the building. Oh? Where, sir? I don't know. I thought he said room 27 could have been room 217, but he hung up before I could make sure. Anyway, I think we should recall a couple of units and search this entire building. How can those little monsters dare come back here again, sir? I haven't the faintest idea, Sergeant. Just do as I say, please. Yes, sir. Two of you come quietly, or must I swatch you? That's very sensible of you. Lieutenant gets a big surprise. Lieutenant Grayson, please. Grayson. Uh, got a minute to take a look at something in my office, Lieutenant? Not really, Sergeant. I've called Bertha Fry. She's on her way. Oh, the white flags, you mean? Yeah. Must have more time. She's got to get it for me. Well, if you wouldn't mind coming in, sir, I think I can end all your problems. I'll be right there.
ripping you apart the way you should you? You a man 25 years in SID, always overlooked for promotion. Men come in here years after you. Before you know it, they become your bosses. They treat you like a nothing. That's right. A nothing. An errand boy. Especially Swan? Yeah. How about this one? Lieutenant Grayson. Uh, we started together. And then it was, Sergeant, do that. Sergeant, do this. That's an order, Sergeant. <coughs> so all you had to do was to get rid of Swan and after that, Grayson. And with Miss Fry blasting the little people, they made great fall guys. Yeah. I got the idea from her. Barker, do you realize you would have been eligible for retirement in just a few years? I don't want to retire on nobody. Bertha Fry, she would have made me famous. Famous as a man who'd capture the little people. I, I. Barker. Barker, where did you get that tiny metal tube? Uh, kid brought it in. I, it was on a little fishing rod he'd found. Then. All I needed was a couple of names of people who treated the little people badly. And the, and the Karari, uh, they were both easy to get. I caught one of them when he came snooping around suspicious. His pals thought he'd killed Swan, but he knew he hadn't. And I used him. I, I used him to lure the others here. And, and except for that. That little one in the vent, it would have worked! Well, they got me, little man, but they got your pals, too. And Bertha Fry, I'll see you with it. It's all dying! Jelko's the only witness we need in this case, but you just think about this. This is the first and last break you get from me. Next time I come looking for you, expect no favors. Got that? Okay. Make yourself scarce. That. He let the little, he let the little people go. That's your finish, Grayson. Little people. Doc, did you see any little people here? Not me. I didn't see any. Miss Fry, a confessed murderer claims that he got his idea from your broadcast. Well, I don't see what No, that I is. don't put any stock in such a wild statement either. The man is mentally unbalanced. Unbalanced? Obviously. He also has 
hallucination is about seeing little people here. Now, Miss Fry, I'm going to ask you a question. Did you see any little people? No, I didn't. Thank you, Miss Fry. Good day. And if this Earl hadn't landed in loose sand, I wouldn't be here. Now, why didn't you tell us this before? Well, let's just say I didn't like the tone of the questions. Mark is absolutely right. I was trying to get to the truth of the matter, like a real friend. As the old noble Roman Cicero once said, the shift of fortune tests the reliability of friends. Now, with some friends, you don't need enemies, Fitzhugh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.